He's Mike Florio from ProFootballTalk.com. And I saw where Mike was mentioning that maybe Tampa's willing to give up that first-round pick for Darrell Rivas as uh, some breaking news here as we get ready to go to the NFL draft in a couple of weeks. What's the latest on this situation with Rivas, Mike? Well, that is the case, Dan. We were told yesterday by a couple of different sources that the Buccaneers are willing to part with the 13th overall pick in this year's draft. It had been believed that the holdup was the Jets wanting the 2013 first rounder, the Buccaneers offering the 2014 first rounder. Now the holdup is what gets given to the Jets beyond the first round pick in 2013. They want a lot more. I don't know how much more. It could be the Percy Harvin package. It could be more than that. But the Jets want more than that 2013 first rounder. But you get the feeling that as we get closer to the draft, the Jets are going to take the best deal they can and move forward, unless they believe that they can work out a long-term deal with Revis, but no one else believes it if the Jets do believe it. But if they get that first round pick this year, then they get, what, a third round or a sixth round, something like that, some kind of combination from the Buccaneers for Revis? It was a one, a three, and a seven that Harvin gave up, that, that Harvin got for the Vikings. And, and so that would be presumably what the Jets are looking for, another pick this year, a late-round pick this year, and maybe a third rounder in 2014. But uh, whatever it is, whatever they want, it's, it's not enough to get the deal done now. But I think as we get closer to the draft, the Jets – possibly will get more realistic because if they don't work out this trade, they got Revis for one more year and then he goes to the high bidder next March. Matt Barkley visiting the Browns and Bills. What do you make of that? Well, people doing their due diligence, kicking their tires, not necessarily for the first round. This could be a second round thing. Now the Browns don't have a a second round pick, but the Bills do. And I think the Bills very possibly could address one of their other needs with the eighth overall pick and then use their second round pick on a quarterback or jump back into the bottom of round one. I think that's the area to watch, Dan, that last 10 spots in round one, whether it's Matt Barkley, whether it's Ryan Nassib, I think you're going to see teams spring back into round one, get a guy then. And if you take a guy at the bottom of round one, you can lock him up for five years. If you take him in round two, you've got him for four years. And that's a real factor for some of these teams. Yeah, we got Ryan Nassib on uh, coming up next hour. How how did he emerge as you know, depending on who you're listening to, and and it you know it's sort of open to uh, you know er- everybody's interpretation here. But is is he going to be a first round type quarterback here? Could he go as high as eight to his college coach at Buffalo? I I I guess if the Bills get sufficiently nervous about someone jumping them later in the process, if they decide they really want this guy, that they believe he's got the potential to be a franchise quarterback, then who cares what round you take him in? If he becomes a franchise quarterback, you'd be glad that you gave up the eighth overall pick to get him. So at a certain point, the chess match gets set aside. Do we want this guy or do we not want this guy? Okay, what do we got to do to get this guy? And, and I, I, it wouldn't completely shock me. I, it would be very, very surprising. But the Bills, I think, really like him. They want to reunite him with his former college head coach, his former college offensive coordinator. The question is, how high do you go? But unlike any other year, Dan, I, I, I still can't get a feel for who people think is the best player, who people think is the best quarterback. Everybody's got their own opinion. There's no consensus like we've seen in past years. Yeah, you don't have marquee names in this year's draft, but it can be fascinating because of where some of these guys are going to go. Manti Teo to Geno Smith to Matt Barkley. You're not quite sure who goes where and when. Well, we, we know what the draft experts think. We have no idea what the draft boards show in each of the 32 team war rooms. And we won't find out until the picks start to fly. That's Even though we don't have the Andrew Luck and RG3 factor, the sizzle that we had last year, this draft, round one, it's so up in the air. And we won't know until the picks start to come. I think it's going to make this year's first round as interesting as any we've ever seen. Concussion lawsuit versus the NFL. Where do we stand with that? Big hearing today in Philadelphia, Dan. And it's a threshold issue. Now, this thing's been around for a couple of years. And they're just now getting to the point where a judge is going to, a judge is going to hear arguments on whether or not the case goes forward in court or whether or not the case goes forward in an arbitration setting. And that's a huge difference for the plaintiffs who are trying to get what they believe is justice from the NFL. If you are in the court system, you ultimately have a jury decide this. The plaintiffs, the former players, want a jury to decide this because the jury's more likely to say, we feel bad for these guys. They have injuries. The NFL has the money to compensate them. Who cares about the medicine? We don't understand the medicine. We just feel sorry for these guys. 
the NFL wants to push it into arbitration because it's far more likely the NFL wins if it goes to arbitration. The argument is there's been a collective bargaining agreement for decades. The collective bargaining agreement covers these kinds of things. That's where the players have to go. That's the NFL's first argument. It's arguably their strongest argument. And if they win here, the concussion lawsuits go away and they get sucked into an arbitration process. Thank you, Mike. All right, buddy. Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com. Yeah, he had breaking news, uh, an update on the Darrell Rivas situation and uh, understanding the value of that, what it means to the Buccaneers, what it could mean to the Jets, the draft pick. And we're two weeks away, so I thought it warranted uh, having him on. Also, this concussion lawsuit, you're really going to find out where this goes. And you're talking about, you know, not, not millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, maybe more than that. If these players have this go to a jury, you got 4,000 players who've signed up for this lawsuit against the NFL. There's a lot riding.